Hi, Lily. Thank you so much for joining us. Welcome to the Open Hardware community. I'm honored to have you as part of the Open Hardware Summit. It is such a pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me. I'm Lily. to all of you at home, the twirling tech goddess. I'm black, I dance, I'm queer, and I'm an engineer. Roll that footage. Hi, inventors. I'm Lily, the twirling tech goddess. I'm black, I dance, I'm queer, and I'm an engineer. Welcome to the twerk shop a show that explicitly encourages radical diversity and inclusion by making the process of learning tech more fun, accessible, and relatable to people underrepresented in STEM. Each week, you'll come along with me as I create something fabulous using cutting edge tools and technologies. Then I'll put it through my patented twirl test to make sure that it's stage ready. That's right, we twirl with our tech because you know what they say, the family that slays together increases their socioeconomic status together. So Lily, tell us, what got you into hardware? Mm, it was uh, out of necessity for wanting to see my ideas come to life and not wanting to have to wait for someone else to bring them to life for me, not wanting to have to ask anyone and also partially not having access to other people for the last year to be able to ask for anyone else's assistance. Actually, this came to mind yesterday because I wanted this shelf here sawed in half and I saw someone over there doing it and I was like, oh, I should just ask him to do it because he's already doing it. And I was like, no, nah, I'll just wait and teach myself how to do it. That's kind of been my modus operandi since um delving into my youtube channel is having these ideas for prototypes and um mechanics and robotics functionality and not really knowing how to do it myself and just taking it into my own hands to figure it out and make my ideas into reality material reality so that's how i got started how'd you get started i got started because uh, i was in library science being a librarian and um, part of that nowadays is like learning databases and learning code and so we were learning processing in library school and at the very end the last chapter of um, the book was on Arduino and I was like wait there's hardware involved that I can that I can do this whole open source bit um, and that's how I got involved in hard in uh, open source hardware <laughs> so you create the twirling tech goddess video series and your videos are so charismatic and inspirational. Where does your energy and motivation come from uh, to build these videos? Um, it actually came from looking for people to look up to who look like me and not seeing them present in this space and being really frustrated by that. Um, and so in, in the times where I've been met with that adversity, it's always helped to have mentorship, um, and I do have it in various ways, but in this very specific way of seeing a queer or trans, queer and trans person of color in the tech realm um, to just send an email to or pick their brain about how to go about navigating microaggressions and racism and barriers to entry and homophobia, misogyny, which all exist in tech. We're not going to act like it doesn't it exist in software, hardware, all the facets of mm -hmm. the industry to not see that person readily available to me where I could just Google them and they pop up and I then have someone that I can say, okay, this person's done it, I can do it. That generally helps. I think like the science supports that it helps to have, you know, someone that you can see yourself in so that you can then mirror it helps with your own personal success i was just on a hike uh, in the mountains which is where i go to get all of my inspiration from which is why it's such a huge part of the brand and i thought to myself i should be my own superhero i should be my own inspiration and in this way that i'm looking for someone to be this icon for me and this image of of resilience as a person with my intersectional identities in this tech space that I should just inhabit that I should just embody that. And then if no one else even likes it, at least I have something I can go to and encourage myself with. And so that's actually how it started. I was making digital art for a long, long time, over a decade, using video media as 
a way of showing and sharing the travels that I was on while I was on tour with Disney on Ice and other companies, specifically with my mama, because she hadn't been to any of those places I'd been to by the time I'd gotten to go to them. So she was the main catalyst for me using video as a, as a way of relating what I was experiencing and sharing with any type of audience. I had already been doing that for a long time. So as I started to come into this new part of my life um, and documentation in tech is such a, an important facet of technology that, and especially open source, um, where the better the documentation, the better the ability for other people to replicate your projects. I saw this overlap happen where I was wanting to share what I was learning with the people who aren't necessarily present in the room learning it with me and to do it in this way that I'm used to doing it, where it speaks to people like my mom, people like my friends who I go do drag with at the gay bars, those people who are not sitting in the room that I related to them in this specific place. So that's how the Twirling Tech Goddess was born. Yay. Shout out to all the mamas out there. <laughs> Shout out to moms <laughs> everywhere. Specifically Geraldine Tate, she would be very upset if I didn't shout her out very explicitly. Love you, mama. So you you touched a bit on knowledge share and you're absolutely right. It's a huge part of open source. It's like the baseline of open source. So can you tell me a little bit about um, why knowledge share is important to you and why it's important to you know, get your videos out there in the sense of them, um, you know, using open source hardware or, you know, doing things in an open source way and teaching people what you know. It's always made sense to me that the sharing of knowledge and information will be the great equalizer. It will be the thing that changes the world. When people who aren't historically given access gain access, I believe that that will be a huge step in the direction of what we idealize as equality and equity and diversity in these spaces. And so to have no barriers to entry, I think eliminates a lot of what uh, people face, specifically having the barrier of entry to just gaining the information. There will still be all of this other structural stuff to dismantle and to have to go through, but at the base level of already having the skill coming in the door, I think that actually benefits, that would benefit a lot of people. So it's always been important for my own learning, obviously, to be able to have picked up a, an encyclopedia and teach myself how to knit just using pictographs in an encyclopedia and give myself a skill of being able to make garments to keep myself warm it it can be very life or death in that way you know it can be a absolute means of survival to be able to access information to enhance and to better your life and i think that that's what a lot of people do when they don't have something that's just right there telling them already, like you are, you deserve this information. This information already belongs to you. If they see something they're interested in, they're gonna go look for it. And it is very important that um, everything be ready for them, that, that things be available. Like there's nothing worse than feeling so inspired. I don't know if you've ever experienced this, but you're just so inspired and you've got the fire and you're ready to go. And then you're like, boop, roadblock. On top of that, then there might be other barriers that keep you from getting past the first roadblock and you kind of have a whole lot of work to do just to get to basic information and basic knowledge and I think that knowledge breeds experience and that experience is what people are looking for when they are hiring and so mm -hmm. and and hiring in these positions that are higher paying jobs and so we're talking about equity across the board we're talking about investment in people's lives and people having access to better their lives like it really starts at just the the base level of learning and shared learning, shared knowledge and information. Even just to know where to get that information, where to be pointed in the direction of the spaces that are going to share, fully share that information versus the places that are gonna charge you for that information. All of that is very important 
when someone's you know doing the cost benefit analysis of where they're going to invest their time, energy, and resources. Yeah, and so you're a student right now at CU Boulder. I am. And you know we're talking a lot about knowledge sharing. A lot about that is education. How do you think your education and open source are like currently being coupled? Um, there is an interesting dynamic going on in the institution of higher learning. <laughs> There's the aspect of it being a huge source of accountability for, for yourself and your community when you're less inspired to maybe show up for <laughs> the attaining of certain skills. And so it does help to have an institution in this way, but it, in, the, in, in another way, once I realized all that I had access to once I arrived here. That's when I was like, oh, this is very incongruous to what I had access to before I decided to go into debt <laughs> for, her, for a degree. And, and it was that injustice that I almost immediately saw for, that my former self <laughs> didn't have access to all the stuff I now have access to that I realized like, oh, well, that's not fair. And then simultaneously though, especially now that we're digital, a lot of the resources that we use for knowledge and education are available online and in these other places. We don't validate that type of learning. Mm -hmm. We don't validate the fact that someone could spend hundreds and thousands of hours in a specific rabbit hole and gaining information and knowledge and experience at home on their own. If, and, and it's totally possible to do that. Um, but it also, brings to the reality in a space where, you know, one version of that access is accessible to me and I can relate the information and relate the skill to a group of people who don't have the exact access I have, but through open source, find that the places where it is available and relate those resources to my audience, it does kind of still show this, there's this, there's an overlap, there's a bridge where it is possible to, gain skill and information education outside of the um, educational industrial complex. But I do find it super necessary for there to be more transparency about that. I think there's this pervasive narrative that being here in this space, which is special in its own way, it's not the absolute. It's not absolutely necessary. And, and there should be some consideration of the fact that outside of these hallowed halls, it is possible for someone to give themselves the skill to equip themselves with the knowledge, information, education, and experience to be able to bring value to a company and organization or a position. And right now that is not what is understood or accepted mm -hmm. in the tech industry. There's a whole lot of skepticism around whether someone can learn electrical, learn coding adequately in their own home. They need to be put through all of these, I don't know what to call them. <laughs> <laughs> obstacle courses hoops to jump through inside of a pressure cooker <laughs> hanging at the top of a american ninja warrior course at the bottom of the ocean <laughs> and it's just like we don't need to we don't need to do all that <laughs> let's talk about your projects your very first project for the twirling tech goddess series was the gear heart headpiece what are the big lessons that you learned in creating that? Oh. So I really didn't have a lot of experience doing 3D printing, but I knew I had this idea. And the idea is what inspired me to even take the class to begin with, because I knew I wanted to get the information to be able to build this thing that I wanted to, to build. Um, so there was a lot of learning of all of the things <laughs> going into that project that, um, you know, from, from motors, which I had no idea about to the circuitry situation, how are we gonna do mobile, power i had no idea about uh, the 3d modeling that went into getting this thing to the printer i learned about various different software from 
the Cura 3D printing software to Mesh Mixer, to Blender, um, just trying to get it to be exactly what I needed it to be. And in a lot of that, as I said, most of that was not stuff I was learning in class. It was inspired by something I had to do in class that then forced me to go and find these other resources that were totally open source. There was so so much information and, and so much documentation available. And especially in the video format, as we're talking about YouTube channels, so many videos on YouTube about people who are like, today I'm gonna show you how to use Mesh Mixer. And I'm like, thank you. That was exactly what I needed. And it also did inform the way that I then did my series because there's a lot of, information that I was like, this is horrible. This, the, this, is, this was a trash explanation of, of what I needed. And then others that were like, this was amazingly documented. I know exactly what I need to do. And I can totally replicate what you were trying to get done. So um, I learned a lot about how to build my brand, how to conduct a learning series through YouTube just from the process of trying to build that first project um, and all the software and then also the hardware piece because I needed to get my own 3D printer and I needed to uh, learn the ins and outs of how it worked and um, I don't know it's always been important for me especially when I get something that's expensive because she didn't always have my I'm talking about the wrong side <laughs> she ain't always had money so it's like when you get something, you learn all about it so that you can make it last longer and you can maintain it and make sure that it lives for as long as possible, really. And from the very first print, I was having issues with my 3D printer. You know, there's so many bits and pieces that can go wrong. And then especially when you don't know the basics, like how to level your bed or which diameter of filament is best for your specific printer. And you're just learning all of that through trial and error. There's a lot of taking the extruder apart because you've gotten a whole bunch of filament melted and stuck up in there because you left 3D printer on it overnight and it finished while you were sleeping. And so all the extra extruder that was still in there is still just heating up and melting all in there. Just so much trial and error that comes from just having a goal to meet. And so that's a lot to learn for one video. That's a lot <laughs> to learn for one little headpiece, you know, it's so huge. it's kind of one but of you those. You did it. I was going to mention when you're talking about 3D printing, by the way. Yes. Um, I am willing to bet that in the comments, there are like everyone right now is saying, oh, yeah, that happened to me with the extruder. And I had this giant mess on my hands. Like it happens to everybody. Absolutely. Um, Comment below. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I talk, talk about like one of the wonderful equalizers I think about open source hardware is that we can all learn about it and then fail at our own projects and then teach people like what to do next time. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, let's see, I wanna talk about, um, so I wanna talk about, you have a lot of knowledge to share. You've learned a lot about hardware, open hardware code in the last few years. Um, and I'm just wondering, like, what are what what are Lily's bits of knowledge that you need to share with the world, and that would benefit the people watching? Do you know what's so funny? You said I have a lot of knowledge, to share, and immediately I was like, "What knowledge?" <laughs> because I, I the think, knowledge you shared on your video. I think I feel like I still have so much to learn, and if I can, and if anything, maybe that is what is what keeps driving me is that I do feel like there's so much to, and there is, there is never going to be a point where you know everything. And if you think you've reached that, which I think a lot of people in tech, no shade, but all T, I think a lot of people in tech do feel like they've got, some people get to that place where they're like, I'm the guy or I'm the girl and I know, I know the things. I feel personally like that is a trap. I feel that it is, of the utmost importance to continue to be learning, to always be learning. And if you're not, if you have excelled so much that your thing is just like, you're you're the one, work, first of all, work. Second of all, now challenge yourself to go learn something else. And then also challenge yourself to meet yourself at an intersection where the thing you're so good at is 
can be coupled with the new thing that you're really bad at and try to then elevate yourself from there. I think that might be my best information is perpetually arrive at unknowing, at ignorance and, and give yourself new challenge. I feel like I get so energized personally in that space. That's where all of um, my juices just really start flowing. That's where I feel so much excitement in this way that I think has kept me alive, if you will. Like it brings, it's more than just exciting. It's life-giving to, to, I don't know, see a problem or think of a problem or think of an idea, have absolutely no idea how you're going to figure it out, how you're going to solve it. I feel like that is the essence of innovation. I feel like there is so much in this world that needs to be innovated. There is so much that is still like, if you feel like you know it all, honey, there are a million problems that need to be solved. If you consider yourself a problem solver, by all means, have at it. Like, <laughs> That's what like, makes you an engineer. That is, that is, <laughs> it is. If you see stuff and you're like, oh, that's just a problem that needs solving. Like it doesn't, it helps tremendously to have people like us who think that way in the world. It really does. Like in a greater than just let's have a career that lines our pockets and allows us to give back and allows us to have a great living experience and situation and, and support our families and friends and, and children. It's also like there's a society, a world out there that needs people who think that way. Um, and the reality is that we will be the leaders of that society one day. Um, and so to have the exercise, to have the fitness of problem solving and the more than just the will to do it, but like an, an excitement for it, a zeal for solving those problems. Like those are the people who are the new leaders. So I encourage all of you to lean into that, lean into that discomfort. You already been doing JavaScript 20 years, honey, it's time to switch it up. C++ in this thing, like, let's go. We don't have, <laughs> let's do it. That is awesome imparting advice. Well, thank you so much for being part of the Open Hardware Summit. Again, I wanna welcome you into our community. I'm so happy that you're here. Is there anything else that you wanna leave the audience with? Oh, absolutely. You're going to go over to my YouTube page and you're going to subscribe and you're going to hit the post notifications bell. If you don't have an account, you're going to make one <laughs> and you're going to subscribe to my channel if you want. And then also, if you'd like to support more of uh, my content and the creati creation of my content, you'll go over to patreon.com slash twirling tech goddess and become a patron of mine if you want, if you can. And that would be greatly appreciated in terms of making sure that I can continue to make this content because it is really important to me and apparently other people, which makes me so excited. It's important it's to our so whole community. It's so important. <laughs> I appreciate it so much. So yes, Twelling Tech Goddess on all social medias and also most importantly on YouTube where you'll get the full length videos. Awesome. Thank you. Yes, thank you. And remember, if you take it apart and rebuild it, you will know it for life.